Hi everyone, for the first assignment you're going to be required to make changes to some code that will allow you to change the behavior of the popular Pong game from the 1970s. In this assignment there are two different versions of the game. One is in ActionScript and one is in JavaScript. If you're already familiar with one of these two languages, I would choose that script to modify and look at for this assignment. If you have neither experience with ActionScript nor JavaScript, I would recommend starting with the JavaScript code. If we take a look at the project directions, you'll see that we need to download a file that's included as part of the assignment, and then we're going to make modifications to that file within our code editor. So for a code editor, we've already recommended here Notepad++ and Text Wrangler, and there's a few other free ones that you can get on the web for free, as well as ways to edit text online. My personal favorite is VS Code or Visual Studio Code by Microsoft. Simple Google search should bring you straight to the Visual Studio Code homepage where you can download a version for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Again, there are other editors you can use. This is just my personal preference. I already have this downloaded on my PC, so let's go back to the instructions. What we're going to need to do here is download the JavaScript project file, and that should be attached to the assignment. So if we scroll right to the bottom, we should be able to see project1as.fla and project1js.html.txt. The second one is the JavaScript, the JS file, which is what we're going to be working with. The easiest way to download this file is by simply right-clicking on it and save link as. I'm going to choose desktop and hit save. If you do actually click on the text file, it may render it directly in your browser. You don't want this, so go ahead and close the tab, right click, and save it. So now that we have our file saved, let's take a look at Pong. So once you have your file downloaded to the desktop, the first thing you're going to need to do is rename it. You can do this by right clicking and selecting rename. We want to make sure that we remove this .txt extension on the end. You're going to get some kind of warning asking you about changing the extension, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes. What this essentially does is it turns this file into an HTML document that the computer recognizes to open directly within your web browser. So I can now double click this and it should open within my regular web browser which is Chrome. If you leave the .txt extension it will try to open the file directly in your text editor, which is not what we want to do for this purpose. In order to actually edit your document within your text editor, let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. If you're using Notepad++ or one of the other applications, feel free to follow along. I'm going to go ahead to my file directory, open file, and desktop, project1js.html. And you should now see the full project opened in your text editor. So first of all, let's try to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing. One of the things I want to make very clear at this point of the video is that the purpose for this assignment is not to teach you JavaScript from beginning to advanced level where you're all of a sudden going to be completely coding a Pong game on day one. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to give you a taste of what JavaScript is like and what you can potentially do with it in terms of interactions on the web and building basic games. The areas I want to point your attention to in this code are the text in green, the comment areas that the original author has created. So you'll see here the first one is basic styling centered around the canvas. These are some CSS styles. I don't expect you all to know uh, what CSS is at this point, but just understand that it's styles used to control how a web page or application looks in your browser. If we come down a little bit, you'll see uh, the constants section. Constants are typically values in an application that don't change and they're used over and over and over again so you don't have to keep rewriting them and redefining them. And then we have our game elements, our player paddle, uh, updates uh, to position for press keys for controlling the paddle, uh, drawing the paddle, the AI's paddle and the user's paddle, ball object itself, the code using to serve the ball towards uh, each side of the canvas and other code here for ball position, uh, starting the game, initiating game objects, 
updating game objects, clearing the canvas, and starting and running the game. So essentially this main function at the very bottom, this is what runs first. And once main is called, it calls the main function and the rest of the game executes within your browser. Again, I don't expect you to understand all of the nuances of the code. There is, however, a video posted within the instructions, which will uh, give you a more deeper dive into the JavaScript used for creating this Pong game. For the purpose, however, of this assignment, you're only being asked to modify a few simple pieces of code to make some differences in the game and the canvas itself, which we're going to look at now. All right, so let's go back to the submission requirements. You're basically being asked to complete six different modifications within this code, modifying the speed of the ball, the size, height of the canvas, width of the canvas, speed of the player's paddle, and speed of the AI's paddle. So let's take a look at the speed of the ball and see if we can make some changes. I'm going to go back to our Pong window. And let's take a look at the code itself. So earlier I mentioned main is where everything starts. So let's take a look through our code and find function main. It's right here. So main is responsible for essentially creating the canvas and setting up the game promotion. So a lot of what happens in here is dependent on variables that have already been set within the code. Let's take a look at some of those variables, okay? So earlier I brought to your attention some of the comments that help us as we're looking through uh, our code. So if we go to the very top, we can see some of the constants are set, and this is for our canvas. So the width is 700, the height is 600. Um, we also have some math for pi, and we have up arrow and down arrow. We don't need to change any of this for the speed. We want to actually change the speed of the ball. So let's take a look further down, and we're going to look for the ball object. And you'll see a similar set of declarations in the ball object. They're formatted a little bit differently here because they're in the format of what's called an object in JavaScript, uh, which we don't need to get into, but essentially the properties of the object are very similar to how we set up variables that I mentioned earlier. So if we look here, we see speed. It's currently set to 12. Let's slow it way down to one and let's see what difference it makes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, change my code. I'm going to save it. I'll refresh on the browser side and you'll see our ball is extremely slow so the game will be a lot easier to play at this point so let's uh, let's put that back to 12 and let's take a look at the other things that we need to change we want to be able to also modify the size of the ball so how would we do that well there's a variable here called side we know that the ball is square in the game canvas. So let's let's play around with side and see if that does anything. We'll try maybe doubling this to 40. Hit save and I will refresh and here we can see our ball has doubled in size. So you can see with just making a couple of small changes to values within either properties or variables or sometimes in constants we can make different changes to our game. Let's go back up and look at the constants again. Earlier I mentioned that these constants impact how the canvas is drawn on the screen. And so if I wanted to change the height of our canvas, I could essentially double it to 1200. I'm going to save it. I'll refresh in here and you can see our canvas is doubled. So I'm not going to go through all of the rest of these. This should give you enough to get you started on this assignment. What is really just expected is for you to play around with this, understand the changes that you're making within the code, and how they're impacting the game in the browser. Again, you're not expected to understand all of the different functions in JavaScript. We just want you to be able to take away how you could make modifications and be able to work with interactive elements on the web.